lots of emails coming in. So alhamdulillah this is a, it's a great sign of, of tariqah and keeping the way of tariqah and the interacting and important for people to feel connected in a world that is uh, very lonely, very dark and with immense difficulties. One has to remember that the, the tariqah is a lonely path and that's why we started with being comfortable in your solitude, not to be helpless and hopeless but to achieve your, your contentment in what Allah has destined for you. If you win the lottery ticket of paradises, doesn't mean you're going to now distribute the lottery ticket for everyone. So we have to believe that the immensity of this reward of tariqah, of the muhabbat and love of Sayyidina Muhammad it's a lonely path, it's meant to be lonely. It's not a path in which you're going to bring everybody and all your friends or what you guys were doing there, now you'll do it here and we'll do it together this way. It's a very lonely path because Allah doesn't necessarily give that reality as to everyone. It's not something cheap that handed out, oh yeah here, here's your, here's your path, here's your path, here's your path, here's your path. These are immense rewards and the price of paradise is very high. The amount of difficulty that one will struggle in to reach that reality is very high. And the, this is a, a lonely path in which you walk it and you be happy. That Allah describes who's better, the one whom is, is head down and everything broken and you can read his face of, of how difficult everything is or whom their head is happy and content with Allah although his path is filled with cracks and crushing and concrete all broken. So means that it's an immensity that many people email, I want my family to come, I want my relatives to come, I want my uncle to come, I want my baba to come, I want everybody to come into the path, it's great. It's the generosity of a loving heart but its reality is no, everybody will come at their own speed, many will not come and your faith is a lifeboat, preserve it, build it do all of the practices necessary to achieve what Allah wants you to achieve. It's not meant that you're going to call everybody onto your boat and sink it because everyone you bring they come with their disbelief, their disrespect for it and all sorts of difficulties. So we first come to the realization it's a lonely path. That if Allah has put that within my heart then I'll do my practices, I'll build my relationship and I have to keep everybody else content around me because Allah didn't call them into that reality and to that level and to that struggling. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a path for ourselves. If you've been called to His Divinely service, His Majesty's secret service then alhamdulillah that is for you. It's not something open for everyone. So we have to live a life of being content and understanding and people will sort of break off, not understand, not want to do those types of practices and you do them by yourself, find your contentment and build your, your relationship with Allah with Prophet and alhamdulillah Allah complete His ni'mat upon the soul of the servants inshaAllah. Do you have any questions for Interactive Thursday? Uh, Sayyidi, many questions but many of them have been repeated. Many repeated questions? Yeah. Oh that's nice. They can email, yeah. if they, those are people probably new and they can say, oh how come you didn't answer my question because the, this audience has been for years. There's a new book coming out and inshaAllah that'll be… A, two years of, of, of question and answers for the meditation and that's not out yet, we're still in the proofing stage but that uh, has almost every question that you can imagine that we've covered under tafakkur and contemplation. So that how to, how to breathe, how to do, how to do this, how to do that. So alhamdulillah that like an encyclopedia of tafakkur and muraqaba. So those many things will, will be in that book, they can get the book, study from the book and they can email, we'll send the articles out and the links for the articles inshaAllah. If we have anything that's of a newer so that the people 
can find benefit in that. Salaam Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, What is the reality of feeling the heartbeat in the left thumb during meditation? What is the reality of feeling the heartbeat in the left thumb in the meditation? Yeah, that's uh, important in the meditation practices when we send out the instructions is that when you hold and to be conscious of the thumb. So you'll see a baby go like this and it has to be subtle, it doesn't have to be like, like you know you're confusing people with other religions. It's just when the thumb touches the index it's a spiritual energy that Allah gave to infants even and that's how their spurt of growth is happening. So you look at any infant and every infant they immediately put their finger and their thumb together because the thumb holds their spiritual identity and then the secret of the index finger is a vein that runs into the heart and the heart being the, the center of Allah's command central for this qudra and for power and for the reality of the soul. When the heart and thumb connect, like connecting your car and the spark plug, there's now a connection for your reality and for the energy of your reality to come to be present with you. So feeling that means then that energy you're beginning to feel the beat of the heart and this is all based on the heart, all our tafakkur is based on the heart. When you don't put the finger and the thumb together and you just try to meditate like this, your meditation is all in your head all over the place. And that's why they all hold their hand and their thumb and it just settle so that nobody sees it, you're not trying to be identified by anything. But this is a tremendous reality and we've described in the Saturday talk that came out from Divine Reality of the coding in the hands. These are not just random creations Allah made, you know He, he could have made you with three fingers like the jinn or He could have put you with just two thumbs. <laughs> There's a secret in everything Allah creates, nothing is wasted, everything has an immense reality. Even the lines on everything is a coding from Allah's Divinely names to the Divinely names of Sayyidina Muhammad and these are locking keys for realities to dress the servant. So many people are drawn to these sci-fi movies and everything you're seeing in these movies, they're drawn especially spiritual people. Why? Because there's something in their soul knowing these are very true. The actions that they do with their hands and the movement that they do with their hands they're igniting and they ignite and they can bring their energy out and Allah knows what, what that energy is capable of and Allah will bring more and more of those realities as we grow closer to the last days. As the Dajjal begin to present himself and his, his minions, Allah will begin to activate awliyaullah and what they have taught and what they have brought onto this earth. So everything is, is, is there, everything is coded, it's a matter of now understanding and activating these realities. Tafakkur is based on bringing the power of your soul and looking your heart so that your soul and heart are activated from Divine the Presence like a lightning that come into your being to activate you. And the key and lock is then understanding your, your thumb and activating that energy for yourself and to bring your energy into your being. So these are important realities. Anybody feeling their thumb? No, alhamdulillah. And anyone feeling that when they ignite their finger and their the thumb and index they feel the muraqabah, they feel the energy stronger, they feel the focus of the tafakkur is now focusing because you're now calling upon your energy to be present with you inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. How do we interpret the signals, energy which comes to our heart? How do we interpret the signals? energy that come to the heart. Yeah alhamdulillah we have many things on, on that is that uh, the only interpretation that's necessary is to ask for energy. 
you know, like a GPS. You say, I want to go to pizza place or I want to go to the super center. What you put in is what you're going to get out. Make the intention that I only want energy, Ya Rabbi I want to only reach to the ocean of power, grant me to be in the ocean of power. So then the only focus is to feel energy, to be in the presence of the shaykh, I feel the matter of the shaykh, I feel the presence of the shaykh that dress me from your light, dress me from your presence, send your light into my heart, activate my heart and I just want energy. If anything else is coming into the mind, it's a distraction from shaitan. So how to shut your mind off is now your great jihad. And so Imam Ali Salaam described that, I have annihilation within my annihilation, means you never made it. Every step has a new fight, it's a video game. You only got to level one, don't think that you finish the game, there's infinite levels in Allah's reality. So then you annihilate again, you annihilate again, I don't need to see it, I don't, I don't need to see anything, Ya Rabbi I'm nothing, negate yourself because whatever is coming is now coming to boost your nafs, boost the ego, boost all, all of the, the bad characteristics. So the training is, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I don't need all these things, I'm no one just let me to reach into these oceans of power. I wish I want to be dressed for that light and you feel the light come with like an energy and immediately begin to hit your heart and grab your heart like somebody grabbed it and is holding it and crushing it. And that's a jalali, when Allah when we say Allah somebody even asks, what is az Allah azzawajal, izzati wa jalalihi. So when we shorten it, Allah Azzawajal, Allah's Izzati wa Jalalihi, Allah's might and majesty. So anytime we mention Allah, Allah, anytime we mention Allah, you have to say Izzati wa Jalalihi, that His Izza and His might is everything. So when Allah send the light into the heart, it comes as a Jalal, and like a lightning, it hit the heart, you feel you're having a heart attack. Just breathe and keep doing your zikr and if you did get a heart attack, okay your family will take care of you. But for now pretend like it's just energy coming, don't worry about it. <laughs> Drink water, do your meditation and, and keep going because that's a tremendous energy that hits the heart. So those energies are important to be dressed on the soul for jalari tajali. And then there are other times you may meditate and think of Prophet and begin to cry and, and have remorse and sadness and this is a jamali, beatific dress that dresses the servant. So alhamdulillah, inshaAllah Allah dress us and bless us from these realities. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa When I'm meditating and making my connection, I get goosebumps and feel waves of chills almost but I don't feel that I'm heating up, please help. When I meditate I feel goosebumps and chills and I don't feel like I'm heating up. Yes, keep going. Yeah, the goosebumps and the chills is you spooking yourself out maybe. Because the first levels of meditation many people are, are scared, oh my God there's going to be jinns in the room, there's angels around, there's creatures, what's this, what's that. So a lot of the perception that you're opening when you sit to make tafakkur and contemplation, what is going to be your enemy? Fear. Because the nafs not happy that you're doing this. So nafs is, well, what are you doing now? I'm, I'm ruling you, why you want the heavens to rule you? Because he has you with shaitan as a partner and we're ruling you, why you want to go to them? So what's his weapon is to fear. So the first level is going to be, oh yeah, maybe something coming in the room, maybe something's touching me, I feel the wind and then I'm going to run and scream and get out and so fear is the opposite of faith. And when you fear it shows the lack of faith and that's why these are now the two that have to be balanced. When you sit there that's why all this teaching is a package deal. When you sit there then go back into the shaykh's teaching and say, what am I fearing? I'm asking to make the connection, I'm asking for the shaykhs to be present, then my faith is Allah is granting. 
If Allah is witnessing, Prophet is witnessing, my shaykhs now have been called, why are you fearing? And then when you have fear then you keep telling yourself, why am I fearing? Why is it that I have fear? And then now you have to work on faith, Ya Rabbi grant me iman, grant me faith, make my salawat, make my faith strong, why am I fearing, why am I fearing? So this is how the, the shaitans play with us is the level of fear and that's why the goosebumps and, and cold air and wind and, and different things because the soul gets a little bit spooked, energies are, are all, all around. So that could be one of the reasons for feeling the, the different energies but yet not reach the level in which the heart feels lit. That has to be continuous work and continuous connection. None of this is drive through McDonald's. This is a lifelong practice, you practice, you give, you take notes, you attend, nothing is going to happen right away because these are high level security clearance. Allah not going to give anything to anyone that not been secured. So everything that being taught here are encryption codes. So somebody want to send you bitcoins, they have to send you a code. And with that code and with that login with specific numbers and letters is like a big phrase. They send it to you, you can access your coins. You think it's, it, that's easier or Allah Allah is much harder so that you want to access these heavenly realities and powers and these energies upon the soul, these good characteristics then Allah wants all of these and that's an encryption code. Do like this, do like this, do like this, do like this, do like this until your code is, is the way Allah wants it and every time you put your key in it unlocks that reality for you. Because all of the system has been done but nothing comes easy just you know I tried it two minutes where's the energy, how come nothing's happening. So it's a lifelong process that you did everything, you followed everything, you supported everything, you did all that you could, you took your notes and you have all these realities within you then yes definitely you should be connecting and feeling their presence there, the rid and satisfaction to be dressing you. And that light begin to dress the heart and bless the heart and they feel themselves heating up and being energized inshaAllah. Oh, so overcome fear and that's not only for the person asking a question but these questions open up the ability to talk about these subjects that many people in the audience and later who will be tuning in and hearing that these will be relevant. So it's never for the person who ask the question that we don't talk to any one person and we don't direct ourselves to people but it's always directed to myself as a reminder, uh-huh, okay now we talk about the entirety of that subject inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah When Muslims say Lord does that refer to Allah or the Prophet? Just wondering because I used to be Christian and Lord can mean Jesus or God. Yeah, Allah is Allah, everything else is an interpretation. So no, liege Lord in English literature it has many meanings. Lord is that which is and which governs you. So we have lords of the earth, lords of the soul, Lords of the heavens, that which governs you. In English literature I think they say, liege lord, that my master, my, my supreme, I've been watching the crown and they call him sovereign, the king, that, oh my sovereign, that you are sovereign in your power that no, no one has power over you. So I mean, these are many different realities, that's why the Wahhabi interpretation try to manipulate haqqaiqs and come and try to redefine words that were not for them to define. So Rabb has, is not only for Allah Rabb means that which governs you. So you can be Lord of your house, Rabb al-Bayt, that you are the governing authority for your home. In, 
in this culture also for your governor, Rabba Shar, the lord of the town. So no, it, it was a, not meant for Allah only but it was for whatever governs you. And the first level of lordship are the vices and devils. So before you say that Allah is my lord which is not true for 99.9999% of the people, cigarettes are their lord, anger is their lord, drinking is their lord, devils are their lord, fighting is their lord. That which governs you and does not allow you to submit to Rabbi Al-A'la, the Lord Most High is a lord over the person. So this is just real basic common sense. If somebody cannot stop smoking, how is Allah his lord? The cigarettes is lord because the cigarette is keeping the person to do that instead of submitting to Allah or the drink. They say, oh we drink but then we also pray and do these things. No, no, then the drink is your Lord. So anything that governs humanity is the, the first level. That's why who knows himself out of nafsuhu and he'll know himself, he'll know that which governs him, out of a rabbahu, right? Al Shaykh? Who knows himself? Or if a nafsuhu, or if a rabbuhu, he'll know his Lord. So he didn't even know his Lord yet. So as soon as he knows himself, he'll look at himself and say, Oh my God, what are all these bad characteristics? These are my Lords. These are the devils that have got to me and all these characteristics. If you have anger, Allah is not the Lord, your anger is the Lord, and that most likely is a shaitan right there. So all these characteristics then that's why that hadith is the immense reality of, of the arifin, arif nafsuhu, arif rabbuhu. Prophet described who knows his nafs, knows himself, is looking to himself, he'll know his lordship. So he'll go into fight that I want Allah to be my lord, not this devil that attacking me, this bad character that is coming after me. And those are the people whom are struggling against themselves to submit to the Lord Most High. And once they fought the lords of the lower reality and bad desires, Allah will introduce them to the heavenly lords. And that's not the house of commons but this is the house of lords. They are not common people, their souls are of a lofty reality in which God has given His grace and majesty to them and what they call saints. And that's the way Allah and the Creator has created them of that reality. So then we begin to understand that if we are trying to reach to the Lord of the heavens then we must be in the surrounding of the house of lords in which these souls, souls of a lord, lordly and lofty reality they're all around us and we must be taking guidance from them. If we don't know any lordly souls then how are we submitting to the Lord Most High? Because it show me your friends, I show you who you are. Can you be around a whole bunch of demonic people and say, I'm submitting to Allah? No, Allah said, Kunu ma sadiqeen, itaqullah wa kunu ma sadiqeen, have my consciousness and keep the company of the sadiq and truthful who are truthful in their deed and in their actions. So this is a huge reality that just from the holy hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah or if a nafsuhu or if a rabbuhu inshaAllah. Uh, dear Sayyidi, how do we increase the love of these holy souls you spoke about in our hearts? Keep their company, how do you increase the love of these holy souls? In your heart and in your action and in your deeds is keep their company, increase your, your love for them, be with them, listen to them, follow guidance from them. When you find yourself in the company of holy souls then you look around and you say that this is a good company to be in because if I'm with these holy people and this is whom I sit with and listen, this is whom I, I take my association with, this is whom I support, this is whom I'm involved 
in every aspect of my life with them, I inter interact with them, I email, I listen, everything I'm doing, then it's a sign for one to understand that they are in a, a Divinely circle and Divinely grace. And they're in the associations of, of paradise circles, where are all the people who believe in the heavens but yet they're not sitting in a circle of paradise. When Prophet described, join the circles of paradise, now they come to you virtual on, on the YouTube. By virtually turning on your YouTube, you turned your living room into a circle of paradise in which that holy hadith describes the angels are circumambulating around your home all the way to Arsh rahman to the Divine Throne and whatever reality that symbolizes. And the angels are dressing that home all the way up to Arsh rahman and the hadith and all the dialogue of Allah describing His paradises, His gifts and His realities. In immensity, immensity of that and all that hadith we've described before where the angels describe that they're all being dressed by this, blessed by this and then one angel at the end said, no Ya Rabbi all that you described you're going to give to them and all the, the, the blessings they're going to have, all the punishments you'll take away from them. There was one who was not even from them and Allah said, if that one was in that circle dress him or him or her from everything I described. So it means that anyone listening to this and had no intention to listen to those zikrs and the mafils, Allah still would dress their souls with immense blessings and dressings. So it's something that can't even be imagined what type of realities and blessings Allah is bestowing. So when we keep the company of holy people and holy souls everything about us becomes holy. Then we understand that when I'm, I'm submitting, I'm putting my lower character down, I'm submitting to their teachings that their teachings are giving me heavenly coordinates and I'm submitting, means I'm saying, Samina wa ta'ana, that I heard what you said and I'm trying my best to obey and taqlid and I'm following, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum and I'm following. So then we must know then we are in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad If we're in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad then you must know that Allah with you inshaAllah. Because Allah said, I'm with Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin, this is the best of company to be in. So alhamdulillah it all works like a formula and has its proofs and its realities. We just have to work that program and work that formula inshaAllah. Oh, can, you, can you ask the shaykh, what is the best type of acts of charity for the soul and in Divinely Presence? What is the best form of charity for the soul in the Divinely Presence? Any charity that one can do <coughs> that increases their love for the Divinely Presence, increases their humanity, increases their bonds of family and kinship and familiarity. So alhamdulillah that's all, all the teaching from the rizq and the sustenance that one earns, Allah's portion is immediately owed and that portion of money has to go to the poor and that's what we call charity. And we talked about this last week. So from what we earn immediately Allah is teaching for us that this money has to be cleaned, you have to give to the poor. From a portion of every pay that we receive that goes to the poor. And from the category of poor if you have family in need they are in first in line. Because you may deem them not to be poor but they may be in a condition of need and they don't necessarily tell you. So the obligation for support to those whom are in need is superior for the soul and that's why we described in Surat Al-Munafiqeen that Allah said, when the dead die and they come into the Divinely Presence they will not ask Allah Ya Rabbi let me go back to make up my salah, 
let me go back to make up my Ramadan, let me go back and make two more hajj, let me go back. Only thing the soul will ask Allah beg Allah let me go back to give everything away and to be granted this dress of salihin, of righteousness. And this Allah is describing in the Holy Qur'an from Allah's words that you're going to ask me when you come up that to give everything away so to, to be dressed from the maqam salihin, not from your salah, not from your hajj, not from all your actions. But the charity that one gives purifies the soul and draws them near to the presence of Allah and the gift to the poor, the gift to their family. Then we describe the hadith that came last week was then the giving of a gift that builds the relationship and familiarity and builds the bonds. And this was the adab of tariqahs that you never go empty house and in our cultures. We say, don't go das khali to somebody's home, don't go empty handed visiting people. This is Islamic culture, you go with a box of chocolates, you go with something always as a sign of reverence and love that you're coming with something as a sign of love. And this was also from Qur'an that don't go empty handed to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that to give something before you ask something from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad it purifies the niyat and the intention and the soul of the person that you're giving because you believe in Allah and you give from that which is dear to you so you're really showing you believe in Allah Now ask because you put your key and lock to show your belief. But if you're going around just asking everybody, how about you pray for me, hey how about you pray for me, hey how about you pray for me, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't show any belief. So in, in Qur'an Allah was describing that give your giving before you ask something from Sayyidina Muhammad Why is obvious? Because it shows faith. And then Prophet described that this gift giving develops a bond of love and familiarity and familiarity means family. So you make a community be like a family that they give gifts, they're loving and they're kind. And anytime you receive a gift the obligation that Prophet taught to them is to give your gift back. So what is the gift that a pious person gives back, what he's going to give you an atr because you gave him an atr? is he gives you the gift of his du'a and at that time the transaction is accepted by Allah because Allah said, they gave you something, so pray for them. And that's when when they're making du'a for Allah Ya Rabbi they granted me something, gave me something, they gave a gift from something that hard earned from them, Ya Rabbi grant them a relief, take away a difficulty, grant them what they are asking within their hearts and this is the reality that Allah wants is that you need each other, that you love each other, that you're all coming together and, and a symbol of this muhabbat and love and that you're all the, the garden of roses in the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So the beatific teachings of Prophet and how everything becomes beatific, everything becomes loving, everything becomes caring. So alhamdulillah it's immense, immense, immense grace and majesty that Allah and Prophet brought upon this earth. You know these, these businessmen made these things of uh, Valentine Day, uh, Mother Day, Papa Day, Baby Day, ba yeah this was first from Sayyidina Muhammad upon this earth in which their whole world was in darkness. They had no laws, no reality, no nothing. They were buying women by the quality of their teeth. They were curing sick by drilling holes into the head. Their world was in darkness. Islam was never in darkness. Islam came as a shining bright light that illuminated the entire earth. Alam al-Islam came onto the earth and illuminated everything. We had no darkness, we had no lunatics pulling out holes in the heads of people who were sick and had head pressures and headaches. Go back and read their sciences and what they were doing of, of uh, craziness. No, but when Islam came as a light of paradises onto this earth the Shtopdis and all the, the, the shaykhs that brought medicine onto this earth 
Ibn Sina brought all of these realities upon the earth. All the shaykhs that brought math and realities of math upon this earth, upon love and, and, uh, and all of the realities of soul upon this earth from the Holy Qur'an and the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So Islam is the illumination of uh, the earthly existence and took the world out of their dark age into the world of light and heavenly realities, inshaAllah. Tamam. Muhammad Muhammad al-Mustafa Basir Surat al-Fatiha